All right, we're, we're all here. Um, I have a suggestion to just get us going here. And it's something that, that we use a lot, which is just kind of taking a moment, going around the room, and just everyone could just kind of say a word of, just a word or two words about how they're feeling as we kind of move forward here today. You guys okay with that? Sure. Okay. Bianca, you wanna kick yeah. us off? Um, I'm just feeling uh, really great to be here and um, <coughs> I'm excited for us to continue to collaborate. Okay. Feel good. Good to be here. Good afternoon. Uh, I feel um, grateful to be here. I'm just making curious. Steve? I'm an observer. All right. I'm feeling hopeful. Uh, you can use you can you can use mine too. All right, I'll use yours. Yeah, I grateful to be part of a wonderful team, and that's everybody. I'm excited. That's a good one for all of us. Excited to be here also. Um, as I say, curious. Um, Nervous as always, but excited, hopeful. Um, so, Sean, we've had it a little bit, but maybe we could just spend a moment and talk about um, some of the different pieces of today so that we're kind of talking about. It. You had mentioned that you have a presentation as well, right? And so, um, just in terms of timing, our thought is that, you know, we'll kick it off with our presentation and then. Um, Give you an opportunity to do your presentation. Um, spoiler alert, I mean, take a break and spoiler alert, after the break, we'll come back with the proposal. Okay. Okay, does that sound like a good start? So, presentation, presentation, proposal? Presentation, presentation, break, Correct. Yeah. proposal. You had also mentioned that um, you have some more data interests that you might be asking. Uh, depending on what, what, what you okay. present. Okay, okay, we'll, we we'll see where it goes. Questions. Okay. Okay. All right. Does yep. that work for everybody? Sounds good. Uh, all right, Amela, I'll kick it off then with our presentation. I just want to start with a shout out to our audience. Thanks everyone for joining us today. You know, these are important conversations and we appreciate having you here. So um, before we kind of dive into this, Sean, um, just to be clear on what this is, as we've discussed before, um, you know, we had an opportunity to kind of sit back and listen to your presentation last week. And then um, we took a deeper look at it and today's presentation is really an illustration of kind of the district's thoughts on your presentation and the district's thoughts on the current practice of the district. So that's how I summarize it, right? So on that note, let's just start off by one of the most important factors that BBSD has to consider, which is the Boulder Valley School District has a responsibility to the taxpayers and parents of this community to be fiscally responsible while managing the multitude of competing priorities that serve the children of this district. <coughs> Providing fair and competitive total compensation to the many employees that serve this district is one of these many priorities. And people are our priority. About 90% of the entire BBSD operating budget is allocated to paying salaries and benefits to the employees of BBSD. And the remaining 10% is allocated for everything else, including custodial supplies, instructional supplies, textbooks, technology, utilities, software, maintenance expenses, among many other critical needs to provide education to students. So with approximately 29,000 students in 57 schools, it takes approximately 4,500 employees working together to provide the best education possible 
for every student. Our classified employees, many folks in this room, are dedicated individuals who wake up early to transport our students safely to school, feed our students nutritious meals, ensure that our buildings, systems are functioning and that our grounds are cared for, that our walkways are cleared of snow, that our buildings are clean and safe. And without our classified employees, we wouldn't be able to meet our student needs. BVSD provides very competitive wages for classified employees and continues to value them in a multitude of ways, which is one of the reasons that Forbes.com recognized BVSD as Colorado's top employer less than two years ago. To be clear, that's the top employer of all the employers in the entire state of Colorado. And the voices of BBSD employees across the district and all employee groups made it happen. And that was before the pandemic and the Marshall Fire where BBSD time and time again found ways to support classified employees through challenging times. But more on that later. To begin to understand what the district does to take care of its classified employees, we need to look at the full picture. And that begins with a look at total compensation. Total compensation is the total monetary value of all of the compensated elements that are provided to you as part of your compensation as an employee. This is really important because without considering total compensation, you cannot reliably compare the monetary value of your time spent in a job against the other opportunities that are out there for you. Here's a simple example of total compensation. I just want to walk you through this for a second. If you have employee A, employer A pays $15 an hour for a month of employment, which is 173 hours. 15 times 173 is $2,595. But employee B pays more. They pay 16 dollars an hour, which is $2,854 a month. Seems like employee B is the better deal. But when you do a deeper dive, and you look at other elements of total compensation for employer A, you find out that employer A also provides $500 of monthly contributions to health insurance, and they give a leave day per month, which is $120 worth $20 of your work time. And so at the end of the day, when you add this together, the monetary value of employer A is $3,215. In this very simple example, employer A is clearly the better off. Now, to be realistic, most employers offer benefits in different types of components, and so it is more complex to compare them, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it's really important to understand all these pieces. A look at total compensation at BBSD. So BBSD spends an average of Per, per year, per employee, $8,484 for benefits eligible employees. In addition to what we pay you for health and dental. As a para employer, BBSD contributes 20.9 of employee earnings, and that number is going to increase to 21.4 for the 2022-23 school year. Medicare is an additional contribution that the district gives, which is 1.45 employee earnings, long-term disability, an additional 0.158%. And not included in the calculations that Steve's about to talk to you about, our flexible spending and employee assistance program and life insurance, which are some additional monetary value. Steve's gonna walk us through the next slide or two. Okay, I guess Steve, let's see. Steve's gonna walk through the next one after this. So, a comparison of a bus driver with, are you not gonna walk through this one? 
Okay, comparison of a bus driver with agreed upon market date, data school districts. We want to take a look at an actual example of a bus driver. Many of our bus drivers work 20 hours a week. Some work more. This example uses 20 hours per week being worked for 20 days in a month. In a month's pay period with the employee only, health and dental coverage. So they, in this example, the employee is not covering their family members. They're utilizing the employee only health and dental. All the data that we're going to present is from districts directly, received from districts directly when using the average health benefit costing when multiple plans are available. Health and dental were used for fixed costs, para, Medicare, and BDSD's LTD percentage were used consistently for all districts. BDSD's midpoint of $24.50 an hour plus benefits as described, total compensation when you consider all those factors comes out to $3,072 per month. So then we wanted to um, show examples of four different districts, two that pay above and two that pay below BDSD's midpoint, and it's, we're using their midpoint as well. So District A's midpoint is $24 an hour plus their benefits. The total compensation package equals $2,352. And this is, that is at 0 0.5, 20 hours for 20 days within a pay period. A difference of, an, minus 23.4 percent meaning that bdsd's compensation total compensation package is 23.4 percent above district days um, at 1.0 this does drop and it's a difference of 1.2 percent between the two districts when you go to district b the midpoint is 23.19 per hour plus benefits the total compensation with the benefits is 2273 again at 20 hours um, a week or yeah 20 hours a week 20 days per period pay period a difference of minus 26 percent when compared to bbsd and at 1.0 fte it's a minus 8.6 percent then we get into district c which is above our midpoint at 24.76 per hour plus benefits the total compensation is 2615 dollars a difference of minus 14.9% when compared to BBSD at 1.0 FTE, so 40 hours, 8 hours a day is minus 3.2%. Then we have finally District D's midpoint is 27.13 per hour plus benefits. The total compensation is $2,606. A difference of minus 15.2% when compared to BBSD, again that's at 0.5 FTE. But when compared, if there's a period missing there, but after uh, at 1.0 FTE, they are 8.6% above BBSD. So we just want to show those examples. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> Let's take a closer look at BBSD benefits. BBSD provides one of the most generous benefits programs of any comparable Colorado school district. Flexible access to the largest provider network is available through our UMR plans. Managed care plans are offered through Kaiser Permanente, and all plans offer competitive cost sharing. While historically, and this is important, maintaining a plan with no employee contributions for individual coverage. Health and dental coverage for all benefits eligible, eligible employees. 100% of the employee premium is currently paid by BBSD, regardless of the plan selected. In 2022-23, the district will contribute $8,484 per employee for medical and dental insurance over and above medical, over and above annual pay. District employees who work 20 hours or more per week for 60 plus days on the benefits eligible position qualify for full district benefits with no monthly employee premium costs. Most other districts charge full-time, 40-hour week employees a monthly premium. And part-time employees who work 20 to 39 hours per week 
pay even higher premiums. Life insurance, accidental death and dismemberment insurance, and disability insurance are all provided at no cost to VBSD employees. The Employee Assistance Program, EAP, offers up to eight free confidential counseling sessions per issue, per member, per year. Referrals are also available for a free legal or financial consultation. Confidential nurse health coaching, a dedicated health coach to help UMR covered employees navigate health needs at no cost to employees. EcoPass, employees who have assigned hours in a regular position may purchase an EcoPass. Currently, it's only $65 a year to purchase that through VBSD. That equals $5.41 a month, allowing access to the RTD bus service. Free flu shot clinic, all VBSD employees, regardless of position, may participate in the annual flu shot clinic held at VBSD. In certain situations, classified employees are eligible for 31 days of additional sick leave. Let's take a close look at the district contributions to PARA. PARA pension contributions. This year, VBSD contributed an additional 20.9 of your annual pay to your PARA retirement account. As an example, for an employee making $40,000 a year, that was a contribution of approximately $8,360 to your future. If you made more than that, the contribution was higher. And we recently added benefits. We added the zero health benefit. It wasn't something that was negotiated, it was something that was added. This benefit provides an array of expensive medical services and procedures at zero cost to UMR insured employees and their covered dependents. Services such as lab work, imaging, physical therapy, many scheduled procedures, and some surgeries are available to the zero health providers. We increased life insurance and ADD, AD&D benefit from 20,000 to 50,000 for benefits eligible employees. We increased the number of EAP assistant program sessions from six to eight per issue per year. And we reduced the eligibility for the EcoPass to anyone with a regular assigned position, regardless of how many hours you work. As you can see, contributions that the district makes to you as an employee result in more dollars in your pocket and are significant when you consider your total compensation. It's important to understand this in order to get the big picture of the value of working for BBSD. And it doesn't stop there. Let's talk about what is likely one of the major reasons that after surveying employees across the district, Forbes.com found BBSD the top employer in Colorado. BBSD cares about the people that work for this amazing organization, and we show it. In the last two years during the COVID pandemic and Marshall Fire, BBSD responded. In the face of the pandemic, when all schools closed in March of 2020, the district ensured that no BBSD employee lost their job or pay as a result of the pandemic. Many employees who, whose regular jobs were not needed in the initial stages of the pandemic, such as bus drivers, did not work. Yet they received full pay, ongoing health insurance, as well as other benefits and job security. When it was clear that the pandemic would impact the opening of schools in the new school year, impacted employees, bus drivers, food service staff, were deployed to help our operations teams and buildings across the district with no loss in pay. Employees across the district who were uncomfortable returning to in-person work were granted personal leaves and allowed to return to their jobs when conditions changed. The district provided employees with an end-of-year bonus to show appreciation for the work completed during the pandemic. And employees impacted by the Marshall Fire received additional leave time over and above their accrued leave time. 
Again, the life benefits and the financial benefits that directly, positively impact you run much deeper than just your pay. But let's talk about pay. For nearly a decade, BBSD, in conjunction with BBCA, has maintained a robust salary philosophy for all classified employees, establishing pay ranges that target the 75th percentile of the average midpoint that is identified from data collected from each comparable district, as well as other private and public organizations. The district uses the 75th percentile of the market data, while the majority of other comparable districts utilize average, which represents the 50th percentile. BBSD believes in and continues to stand behind this philosophy for a number of important reasons. It ensures that BBSD classified jobs are looked at annually and adjusted appropriately to competitively stay ahead of the market average. It gives BBSD a competitive advantage when recruiting employees for classified jobs. It is a consistent, thoughtful approach to compensation that looks at real data and trends and allows for adjustments that are applied in a consistent manner across the entire classified employee group. It's the same compensation philosophy utilized to maintain administrative and professional technical and office professional jobs up to date and competitive in the market. It is a philosophy based on the principles of sound compensation theory. The data is collected by an outside consulting firm, Own Consulting Services, OCS. The same firm provides market data collection and analysis for over 40 school districts in Colorado, as well as districts in California and Washington State. It is a detailed, thoughtful approach to compensation that ensures that the district is responsible and deliberate when making compensation decisions. It is a fiscally responsible method for decision making. It's also important to understand what the philosophy and process does not do. It does not entertain random data in order to support a certain result. It does not utilize unreliable sources of data collection. It does not embrace a comparison of unlike jobs. It supports a consistent long-term approach and it does not change on a whim. talk a little bit more about home consulting services. They are the experts in their field in collecting data and conducting salary surveys for over 40 districts. They are an unbiased third-party vendor with access to the most up-to-date job descriptions and salary information from our peer districts and beyond. Utilizing OCS provides BBSD and BBSD employees with the peace of mind that the salary data comparisons are valid, reputable, and consistent over time. OCS gathers salary data from comparable public and private entities as well as the 10 Colorado school districts that are similar in size, location, and proximity. OCS includes job matches from the public sector within the geographical target market and salary service survey data from the private sector compiled by Employers Council. OCS starts with a review of current job descriptions from the public and private entities as well as the 10 similar Colorado districts to find comparable job matches for each surveyed BBSD position. A position that matches approximately 75% of the essential job duties and minimum job requirements with BBSD's position is considered a comparable job match. For classified position, Job titles alone are never used for comparison purposes as job titles and responsibilities can vary greatly, even if the same or similar title is used. Once comparable positions are identified, OCS determines the midpoint salary for each matching job in the target market. OCS then uses the salary midpoints for all comparable positions to calculate the overall 75th percentile for the survey BBSD position. The identified midpoint salary at the 75th percentile 
is then used to determine the position's placement in a BPSD salary range. OCS uses a tolerance of plus or minus 5% as it is impossible to set position in a salary range that exactly meets the 75th percentile of the comparison organization bid points. The results of this analysis can be plotted in a graph that looks like this. Just to give you a sense of what this graph is, in this particular example, the red line is the market and the blue line is Boulder Valley. So the red line is the midpoint analysis at the 75th percentile. So all the data is compared and looked at together. This is how BBSD responds to the analysis. BBSD reviews the job, job market study, looks at all positions whose salary midpoints were found to be outside the 75th percentile, taking into consideration the plus or minus 5% factor. Historically, positions that are below the 75th percentile are moved to the pay range on the unit C pay schedule that gets the position within the plus or minus 5% of the 75th percentile midpoint. Historically, positions that are above the percentile are moved down into the 75th percentile. Classified employees whose jobs, do, who are in those jobs, do not lose their pay rate. If their pay rate falls, if their pay rate falls above the new pay range pay rates, the employee's pay rate is frozen and they continue to receive cost of living adjustment increases. In recent years, the district has been able to fund the costs of moving these positions in addition to the step increase in cost of living increases that it has also provided to employees. With the declining enrollment projected to continue, the district may not be able to fund this cost in the future. Let's talk about the ECA's analysis that was presented last week. BBCA collected data from the same 10 districts that we have agreed historically to collect data from. They shared that for the most part their data is the same. There are handfuls of, handful of inconsistencies that BBCA, BBSD, and OCS have agreed to look at. BBCA said that they did not include public and private sector data in their analysis. Leaving public and private sector data out of the market job study generates inaccurate results and is not in alignment with sound compensation study practices. BBSD recruits classified employees from other school districts, the private sector and the public sector. Comparing BBSD classified jobs against all of these sectors when possible is the most reliable method to accurately determine where these positions are relative to the real market. BBCA has advocated to include private and public sector data in the past. One of these occasions was when it was clear that electricians in the private sector were making more than BBSD electricians, including the private sector was a favorable data point to support a pay increase. Leaving out public and private sector data this time around to generate certain results is not sound compensation theory. BBCA left out a plus or minus factor in their analysis. Job markets are always moving and evolving. They ebb and flow. Having a plus or minus factor is a statistically sound practice that helps to adjust for some of this movement. It's impossible to set each position in a salary, salary range that exactly meets the 75th percentile of the comparison organization midpoints. Had BBC included public and private sector data and a plus or minus factor, they would have generated vastly different and likely more reliable results. BBCA's analysis leaves out critical factors and paints an inaccurate picture. But there is more. A number of the claims made in BBCA's presentation last week were incorrect, false, or misrepresentations. 
we'd like to set the record straight on a few. It was reported that, quote, the top 100 administrators received on average of 12.6% or a 15,000 plus a year raise. The top 183 administrators received an average, on average a 13.7% or $14,489 a year raise. There's more to the story. The data that BBCA, BBCA presented was pulled from a website called govsalaries.com, which reports according to public records. The website also has a disclaimer. We cannot make any guarantee that information on this website is 100% accurate or complete. Why it matters? The claim that administrators received a plus or minus 15% raise is blatantly false. Such inflammatory rhetoric based on false and bad data brings into question many of the BDCA claims. In the collegial and open environment that BBSD operates, we would have a conversation about the data that you found. And the district could provide all the accurate data that shows the administrators received the same compensation package as all other staff. Step long, longevity increases in a 0% cost of living adjustment increase. BBA said, BBCA said property valuations are going up. In two years when valuations are reassessed, BBSD funding will also increase significantly. Here's more of the story. State school finance law does not allow districts to generate more than the School Finance Act dictates on a per pupil basis. Why it matters? It is a misrepresentation that school districts with increasing property values generate additional revenue that is over and above the amount allowed in the School Finance Act. It is simply not true that increasing home values generates a windfall of additional local revenue for a school district. A district can absolutely see increasing local revenue with decreasing total funding due to declining enrollment or a reduction in state funding. BBCA said, the unassigned fund balance represents the district's resources available for discretionary use. BBSD has the second largest unassigned fund balance in the state in terms of dollars or percentage. There's more to the story. Unassigned fund balance is an accounting term that means little with regards to district decisions on spending. The BBSD Board of Education can assign fund balance to different purposes and reduce, reduce the unassigned portion. But as a district, we have chosen not to play games with this nuanced accounting terminology and be more transparent. Cherry Creek chooses to assign a significant portion of their fund balance during their audit process. Fund balance is also one-time resources and committing a one-time resource to an ongoing expense like compensation increases would be a reckless financial decision in any financial professional would know. Why it matters. Being transparent and having a conversation about what the figures reported in the accounting report actually mean is how the district chooses to operate. The building of trust and understanding is how the district has operated in the past and is a better place for the students, parents, and staff. Inflammatory claims do not move the district in a positive direction. BBCA said, we're sitting on more than $10 million in cash. What are we waiting for? A rainy day? The district has resources. It's time to pay our support staff the wages they deserve. There's more to the story. 
Adjustments to salary schedules and pay raises are ongoing expenditures. District reserves are not ongoing resources. If you found a $100 bill on the ground and you were sitting on the pile of cash, would you go take a loan with monthly payments of $20? No. That would be a reckless financial decision. Giving raises based on one-time resources is a reckless and unsustainable financial decision. In conclusion, PBSD is an amazing and celebrated employer and our hardworking team members from all of our employee groups acknowledge this on a regular basis. We celebrate that we work in a district that cares about its people and provides competitive pay and valuable total compensation. We are grateful that together we make a positive difference in the lives of children in this district. Accurate data collection matters. Utilizing sound compensation practices matters. BBSD intends to continue its practice of providing competitive wages to classified employees. We stand behind the current compensation philosophy, recognizing that it is a robust philosophy. In the words of OCS President Teresa Lane, whose company conducts salary surveys for BBSD along with 40 school districts in Colorado, no other district that I am working with in Colorado or nationally has the financial ability to set their pay structure at the 75th percentile of the target market. We are proud to lead the way. Thank you. Last week, last week, BBSD sent out an email about the upcoming contract negotiations. I would like to go over some of the content in that email. Teresa Lang, president of OCS, writes, no other district that I'm working with in Colorado or nationally has the financial ability to set their pay structure at the, 70, at the 75th percentile of the target market. As we discussed this last week, but let's review quickly, the Westminster School District pays their classified employees at the 100th percentile. BBSD pays its teachers at the 100th percentile, and many BBSD administrators are paid at the 100th percentile. Westminster pays $925 per month for their employees, and that includes a zero plan for employees plus kids, and yes, that's for part-time employees too. Number two, compensation negotiations begin. As compensation negotiations begin, know that providing excellent pay for our employees continues to be a priority at BBSD. This is why we strive to keep our salary ranges in the 75th percentile. <clears throat> sorry, I was on the wrong tab. Sorry. Westminster employees are at the 100th percentile. On average, BBSD Unit C employees are 5% below the 75th percentile. So we're the blue line, the midpoint is the green line, while teachers and administrators are at or near the 100th percentile. So that difference between the two lines is 5%. In terms of dollars, Unit C employees are 5.6% below the 75th percentile. Number three, outstanding benefits. While it is true that our benefits are good, these are the same benefits that teachers and administrators get. Remember, they are at or near the 100th percentile. Do the pay discrepancies between Unit C employees and teachers and administrators these benefits are not necessarily affordable for many Unit C employees. There are still deductibles and co-pays that add up quickly. These costs may not seem that much for people making 70, 80, or 100 plus thousand a year. For Unit C employees, these costs are significant. Number four, 
In the face of the pandemic, when all schools closed in March of 2020, the district ensured that no BBSD employee lost their job or pay as a result of the pandemic. Many employees whose regular jobs were not needed in the initial stages of the pandemic, such as bus drivers, did not work, yet received full pay and job security. At the same time, the district received $14.9 million in coronavirus relief fund for employee salaries. If employees had been terminated, that amount of money would have been significantly reduced. Also, if the district terminated us, we would have qualified for regular unemployment as well as an additional $2,400 a month of unemployment benefits during the pandemic. Sadly, $2,400 a month is more than most of us bring home in a typical month. For drivers and, ages, for drivers and aides, wages earned during the pandemic closure were based on bid hours, not the actual hours worked, which often include field trips and other duties. Further, if employees have been let go, where would the district be now? As difficult as it is to find employees, imagine what would have happened had we been let go. Number five, as always, we remain committed to transparency. For this reason, we intend to ensure all our employees are informed throughout the negotiation process. Following each negotiation session, you will receive an email update. But transparency has not always been the case. This is the first year that DBCEA BBSD negotiations have been open to the public. Under Colorado law, these meetings are supposed to be open to the public. Last year, not only was the meeting not open to the public, but ground rules were established preventing negotiation team members from talking with other BBCA members until a deal had been reached. This year, we requested that the meetings be made available via live video, much as school board meetings are broadcast. This request was denied. Also, it was made transparent, it, it was not made transparent to the general BBCEA members that private sector data was being used in calculating the 75th percentile and that the 5% plus or minus variance even existed. I didn't even know that private sector data was being used in this calculation until I received OCS's data the last week of March and I'm the BBCEA president. Number six, about Homes Consulting Service. OCS. BBSD has been working with OCS for a decade. They are expert in collecting data and conducting salary surveys for over 40 districts in Colorado. They are an unbiased, third-party vendor with access to the most up-to-date job descriptions and salary information from our peer districts and beyond. Using OCS provides BBSD employees with peace of mind that salary data comparisons are valid reputable and consistent over time. Here's a list of Unit C positions and how OCS data compares to BBCA's data. I have uh, separated out into differences, level one differences for the following positions. There are no differences for or the number was transposed or pulled from a prior year schedule. OCS uses Westminster position data from prior year in eight different positions. So these are the correct positions, but OCS uses last year's numbers several positions there are no differences like bus drivers, bus aides, maintenance mechanics. Level two differences, the following positions, there are one or two numbers that are different or wait, there are one or two numbers in or positions where BBCA numbers differ from OCS. So this is positions like food service worker, BBCA has this as a match for food service assistant, OCS does not have this as a match. Um, OCS note says food service manager one and two, but only uses food service manager one. OCS indicates food service manager uh, four, but uses food service manager two as a match. BBCA uses food service manager three. Level three, uh, 
The following positions were not reviewed by OCS or our numbers differ significantly. So for the lead custodian position, OCS did not review this position. BBCA has five matches for lead one and six matches for lead two. <coughs> Service driver. BB, uh, OCS has a Jeff Codelli operator as a match and assistant catering manager as a match. BBCA has driver for food from Pooter, delivery driver from Thompson, food driver from St. Brain, non-CDL driver from Adams, and a warehouse driver food services from Jeffco as a match. OCS did not review the locksmith position. BBCA has matches from all districts for this position. Level four differences. These positions do not exist in the market or BBCA and OCA numbers differ significantly. So culinary center production assistant, uh, the wear washer and the culinary center production cook um, are difficult to find in the market matches. And then we have a couple positions, warehouse worker and security agent where our numbers differ significantly. Now I'd like to show again part of the video from the March 15th Board of Education meeting. The yellow arrow at the top. <coughs> oh, it is orange. There is kind of showing in the blue numbers. Those are the midpoints. So this is just a lot of numbers, but this is the data for the bus driver. Um, and you can see that the districts are listed kind of in that top rectangle on the left. Um, of course, every district in your market has a bus driver position. That's the data. Um, we then you can see there's we've kind of gathered up some ways to compare the information but that third uh, rectangle down the page is basically looking at any private and public sector information and so we were there is a match that's that's shown in that data as well and then in the very bottom and i don't expect you to be able to see that but the bright green is where we're calculating that 75th percentile so i think if memory serves me it's 25 i think it's 20 2544. So OCS uses a bus driving job in Greeley as a match that has a this position starting pay is more than $5 an hour lower than any school district in this analysis. Almost $4 an hour lower than the maximum salary and over $4 lower than the lowest midpoint salary. Luckily this number has been removed from the final data. This, this position was included at the time of this presentation. Including this market data point in the calculation, the 75th percentile is 25.44 as Teresa said. Without it, 2577. That's a difference of 33 cents, which equates to almost $700 in pay a year. Now let's look at the head custodian AB position. <clears throat> this is the elementary head custodian position. OCS uses two market data points in the 10 districts, the city of Thornton and Boulder County government. Using these two data points, the 75th percentile is $23.12. Without them, it's 23 24 While this may not seem significant, these points still reduce the 75th percentile. Now let's look at the head custodian C position. This is the middle, middle school head custodian position. OCS uses the same market data points, City of Thornton, Boulder County Government, that they use in the custodian AB position. 
With these market data points, the 75th percentile is 2521. And without them, it's 2620. That's almost a dollar difference or over $2,000 a year. Now let's look at head custodian DE. This is the head custodian high school. OCS uses the same market data points for this position as they use for head custodian A, B, and C. City of Thornton, Boulder County Government. And the midpoint is 2701. Without these data points, it's 2780. That's over $1,600 a year below the 75th percentile. Using private and public sector job salaries in these calculations serve only to reduce the 75th percentile and thus unfairly underpay UNC employees. Or 20, um, we're then looking at salary range changes. So we're recommending range changes based on that survey data. And, and then we're also recommending range changes based on internal equity if no data exists. So for example, if we have a position in your district um, and think, um, there's a culinary, I think you have a culinary center production cook. She's actually referring to the culinary center production assistant. Right now. I can't find that in your marketplace. Nobody has that position in your marketplace. which. Great, you have it, that, that, that's all fine and good, but I have to figure out as your third party consultant that doesn't know the people, that doesn't know the department, I'm gonna look, and this is where the job description comes into play, I'm gonna look at that job description, analyze the essential duties, responsibilities, the scope of the position, the requirements for the position, um, the independent judgment, decision making of the position, et cetera, and I'm gonna look at it and say, should it sit in range three or range four? And if the other position that was, I'm making this up, I don't know what range it's in, but it actually might be in three. If it's in range three and the other position moves up to four, that's like it, I'm gonna say, I don't have market data for this position because nobody else has this job, but the other position like it is moving up. It needs to move up as well. So that's how that internal equity um, piece takes place. Last year, all food service positions that were reviewed moved up a grade. Food service assistant one, kitchen satellite lead one and two, all moved up a grade. But culinary center production assistant and culinary center production cook did not. Teresa said, if another position moves up that is similar to a position where market data does not exist, that position will also move up. If this approach is actually being applied, why didn't the culinary center production assistant and culinary center production cook's position also move up? And while Teresa talks about how there's no matches for this position, when we received the data, this position was removed. Let's look at how let's look at some of the matches Teresa found. She has a from Adams 12, a cook cashier senior, from Jeffco food service hourly worker from Denver Public Schools food service worker too. From Pooter child nutrition team member and from Thompson site assistant nutrition services. April, you're a culinary center production assistant. Do you think these are good matches for your position? I don't. I don't think we're the only ones who do what we do. Again, while OCS provides BBSD employees with peace of mind that salary data comparisons are valid, reputable, and consistent over time. Do these comparisons give you peace of mind? No. Now let's look back at when the district transitioned to the uniform 14-step salary schedule. Prior to this, each department had its own salary schedule. The move, the move to the uniform schedule across all departments was supposed to make BBSD more competitive with the rest of the market. At the top of the worksheet is the years of service. Then we have the position and the salary schedule. So FSA 1, 
We have the 2018-19 salary schedule compared to the new salary schedule that was created for 2019-20, the 14-step system. If we compare these schedules, an FSA 1 starting at step 1 will earn in the first 14 years over $38,000 less in wages. And because the old salary schedule tops in, top in was higher than the new salary schedule, they will continue to lose money over the remainder of their career. FSA 2s will be down over $24,000 in the first 12 years and only after year 30 will, this, will the new schedule outperform the old. <clears throat> KSL 1 will be down almost $42,000 after year 12, and they will and they will still be down over $30,000 at year 30. KSL 2s will be down over $5,000 at year 10. In year 13, the new schedule will start to outperform the old. Production cooks will be down $43,000 at year 11, and will still be down over $20,000 at year 30. Security. Campus monitors will be down almost $15,000 after year 10. In year 15, the new schedule will start to outperform the old. Security dispatchers will be down over $35,000 at year 11. In year 25, the new schedule will start to outperform the old. Security agents will be down over $93,000 at year seven. And because the old salary schedule top end was higher than the new salary schedule, they will continue to lose money over the remainder of their career. Transportation. Bus assistance will be down $13,000, over $13,000 at year nine. In year 15, the new schedule will start to outperform the old. Bus drivers will be down over $2,000 at year seven. In year 10, the new schedule will start to outperform the old. Considering how other positions did, the bus driver position looks pretty good. I remember when these contracts were being proposed. I wrote several emails to BBCA members letting them know that this was not a good deal for the following reason. It was going to take nine years on the new schedule so we're here and <clears throat> this is the old top end at 2343. To get to that number or more, it's going to take nine years. And another four years to get back what you lost in the first nine years. So almost $12,000 less in the first nine years. And it doesn't, the schedules don't flip until year 13. While employees that were stepped out saw this as a way to continue up the salary schedule, it was a bad deal for far too many other UNC employees. Many UNC employees were robbed of their fair wages. Let's look at a few bus. Uh, bus dispatchers and routers will be down over $93,000 at year 11. And because the old schedule tops out higher than the new schedule, they continue to lose money over the remainder of their career. Fleet Tech will be down over $16,000 at year 11. At year 19, their new schedule will start to outperform the old. Now when COLA is added to the 18-19 schedule for Fleet Tax, now they'll be down $31,000. So the COLA that was added to the 1920 steps if we add that to the 18, 19 steps, it goes from 16,000 to $31,000 down. And they'll still be down over $6,000 a year 30. Now let's look at custodial. Custodians will be down over $29,000 at year 12. In 30 years, their schedule will up will start out, the new schedule will start to outperform the old. Lead custodians will be down $24,000 at year 12. 
the new schedule will start to outperform the old at 22 years. Head custodian AB will be down over $11,000 at year 10. The new schedule will start to outperform the old at year 14. Head custodian C will be down over $91,000 at year 14. And because the old salary schedule top end was higher than the new salary schedule, they will continue to lose money over the remainder of the career. Remember from earlier when we looked at how market data points were effectively used to reduce the 75th percentile. This position, head custodian C, was one of those where the midpoint salary was reduced by almost a dollar due to market data being included in the calculation. We can see here that this position was significantly reduced when the schedules were revised likely due to the use of market data points in the calculation of the 75th percentile. Head custodian DE will be down $68,000 at year 13 and will still be down over $60,000 at year 30. This is another position where market data points were used to significantly reduce the 75th percentile. Now let's look at this from one more perspective. Custodian schedule 2018 compared to the current 21-22 schedule. A custodian under the old schedule will earn over $3,000 in the first nine years under the old schedule. Only in year 10 will the new schedule start to outperform the old. When you add back COLA, that they got in 19 and that we got this year to the old schedule. Now they'll earn $23,000 more under the old schedule and by year 11. And the new schedule won't start doing better until year 22. FSA, Food Services System 1, the old 2018-19 schedule versus the current schedule, 21-22. Under the old schedule, they're gonna earn $13,000 more in the first 11 years, and not until year 18 will the new schedule start to outperform the old. And if you add back COLA to the old schedule, it's gonna earn $38,000 more in the first 13 years, and it'll still be $31,000 ahead after year 30. The district provided a few employees who were stepped out with a way to increase their salaries. Unfortunately, this increase was paid for effectively by reducing all other Unit C employees' salaries. And I want to make a correction about the administrative salaries that I presented last week. When I was gathering this information, I assumed that the 2019 numbers were referring to the 2019-20 school year and the 2020 numbers were referring to the 2020-21 school year. In other words, administrators did not receive huge raises going into the pandemic. They did, however, receive huge raises the year before, the 2018-19 to 2019-20 school year. Based on the data provided by OCS, administrators or APT employees' salaries moved to at or near the 100th percentile. At the same time, Unit C employees, in many cases, were left below the 50th percentile. The company, the company hired by the administrator provided data to support great raises for them, while leaving Unit C employees effective, while Unit C employees effectively took a pay cut. Something has to change. And to the point of um, using market data. This is from board policy. Within total salary structure of the district, salary, salaries of administrative teams shall be related to and commensurate with responsibility, educational preparedness, years of experience, and number of days in each yearly assignment. Salaries shall be based upon and maintain an appropriate relationship with other employee classifications and shall be commensurate with those earned by administrators in similar settings school districts. Thank you.
<laughs> way fast. Bianca's on her way in. I just want to wait till she comes. She's going to be in. Here she is, Bianca. All right. Thank you. So, Sean, thanks again for another presentation. Um, similarly to last time, and as we discussed, the audible will be really thoughtful about everything that you said, and it will certainly have some responses next week. Okay, so that's number one. Um, we also want to let you know that um, we have invited Bill Sutter to come next week. I think I mentioned that to you, and Bill Sutter will be prepared to kind of um, provide a state of affairs for you know the budget in general as we move forward. Right? And as promised, we do have a proposal for you today. Um, I have copies for everyone, so we can kind of take a look at it. Um, I do want to share that, you know, we give this, we, we provide this proposal in the spirit of caring about employees, which is something that I think that our presentation speaks for itself. Um, we stand behind everything that we just presented in terms of um, caring about employees, not just for the short term, but the long term, feeling confident with the way that we've done it in the past and the way that we've provided fair and equitable com compensation. Um, I also want to know when I hand this out that the proposal that we're providing today is an all-encompassing proposal, so we would consider it a total package versus presenting different elements. So this is our proposal for a total package. Let's go ahead and pass it down in here. So I'll just take a moment to go through this. Um, item number one, the district proposes to move all unit C positions that have been determined by own consulting services in the current market study to be outside the 75th percentile range into the 75th percentile range. Of course, utilizing the, the ongoing practices of um, using the OCS market data and the plus or minus 5% factor. We also propose to provide a step increase for all eligible unit C employees. And we also propose to provide a 3.5 cost of living adjustment to all unit C employees. Item number four is an important one that I'm sure that we'll have some more discussion about. And just to provide a context, I mean, we've, we have talked about this before. The current no negotiated agreement um, includes a, a clause in it that says that, um, take a look and see if this is correct. Yeah, so, so just to be clear, um, the current language in the negotiated agreement indicates that group insurance is negotiated every year, and our proposal is to remove that language. And the reason we're proposing that is because there have been long-standing practices with BBSD, you know, utilizing a benefits committee that represents members from all the different groups in the district coming together to ultimately make recommendations um, to the board for future compensation benefits. Last year when this process occurred, um, the committee was leaning into making a recommendation that would impact employees for the first time. And that was um, keeping in mind that benefits costs are going up nationwide. And BBCA moved forward and for the first time um, in, in many years said that uh, they would not agree with the benefits committee and it brought the process to a stall. And so our proposal is that we move that language and allow the benefits committee to make these recommendations. And then item number five, item number five is taking into consideration um, an item that you proposed to us, which is increasing the medical tool allowance each year. Um, we are in agreement with that, and we added some language about how that inflationary determination would be made. Yeah, 
question. Yes. So the language that you cite in item four, is that the correct language that, that you're looking for? Because it seems like what you're asking for in the language you're citing are maybe done poorly. Yeah, so I was just looking at that because the item four, in item four, the specific language negotiation procedure does speak to group insurance being negotiated every year. And it looks, and the, what we're pointing to is what the new language would look like if we took out group okay, insurance. Okay, so we're happy to clarify that as well. I'm sure this is going to be, there'll be more conversations around this topic. Any other clarifications for the moment? Um, no, I think I don't really have any questions. Um, so we had also talked about that you might have some additional data requests. Do you have some additional data uh, requests? It was based on what you presented, and I guess I'll have to go back and look at the presentation okay. to see if there's something that we might need additional information. Um, Just one other thing. When you uh, you had mentioned that the bill is going to be at the next session. I'm not going to be at the next session, um, but Peter Morris is going to sit in my stead. Um, so obviously, you guys know from his adventures with the pair of engineers. Okay. Um, so uh, I just want to look. Okay. One of the other, a couple other pieces of business. Um, I failed to introduce Molly as sitting at the table. We, we most of us know Molly. Molly wasn't able to attend the, the first session, but Molly, can you just introduce yourself to the folks that don't know you? So good afternoon. I'm Molly McLaughlin, Director of Facilities, overseeing all of maintenance and custodial operations throughout the district. Excited to be here. Thank you. It is an absolutely wonderful job. Thank you. And um, Dr. De La Cruz, Laura De La Cruz, since her regrets today, she had really hoped to be here. Um, her mother is ill, and she had to make an emergency trip out of state. And she, she would be here. All right. Um, where do we go from here for today? We're 15 minutes shy. Um, and I'm inclined to think that you know we have your proposal. Um, we had you know additional information that we were communicating as well. So I think uh, both parties at this time probably um, would like a little bit of time to kind of process and to provide. Um, uh, I guess. Uh, additional feedback or response to what they've heard. Great, and, and I also just wanted to open it up to anyone on our team if there was any final words today on the process or anything that, that anyone would like to add. All right, all right, well we will see you next week. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.